Hello and welcome to our preview of the action this Saturday at Caulfield. It's Memsey Stakes Day. Lots of spring carnival contenders stepping out. And great to have Michael Sharkey from theshark.com.au to have a look at this meeting with me. Another great day. Lots of big names coming back to the track. Yeah, big names coming back, Sean. And I think we're going to get a pretty decent surface this week. We've had some sunny weather. And as you can see today, a pretty windy day. It'll just help get that uh, extra bit of moisture out of the tracks. So it should be a terrific day's racing. All right, so it's Thursday. We're having a look at the action a couple of days out. And as you say, that weather's going to be most important come, uh, come race day. What about this feature event, the Memsey Stakes? Um, rekindled interest was a horse that caught my eye first up. Catch yours? Certainly did catch mine. Uh, I've, I've put him on top at this stage. Just a little bit worried about the pace in the race. Harder Dreams and Prince Obama seem to be the only on paces. Hopefully it's not just a, uh, a walk, trot and a sprint home. I think if they go at a genuine tempo, Rekindled Interest can win this race. The Ori Star's been a really good guide to the Memsey in the last decade. Uh, it's stronger, I would say, than horses resuming from a break. So I think if this horse is going to go on and, and be a real player in races like the Rupert Clark and, and feature mile races, even the Cox Plate, he needs to be doing something here. Who's the pick of the first up horses? I think Harder Dreams is purely based on that, uh, the pace and how the speed map looks like he's going to play. And Mick Price did say during the week that the horse will run top three. So, look, that's good enough for me. All righty. So there's your thoughts on the Memsey Stakes. Looking forward to the McNeil Stakes as well for the three-year-olds. Lots of smart youngsters uh, here. Who have you selected? Yeah, tentatively with Do You Think, uh, Bart Cummings is representative here. I just think he came a long way in a short space of time last prep from a, a Canterbury win to a Group 3 win in the Bayou and then a, a really good run when only two lengths off helmet in the size produce at Group 1 level. I thought that was a, a preparation that just smacked of a horse that's going to go right on with it as a three-year-old. There's good speed in this race. He can just sit midfield. If he gets clear running, he's going to be really strong late. Obviously, Bart's aiming at the guineas and races like that a little bit longer later on. But he'll be running a big race first up. And what about your trifectas? Yeah, Golden Archer was terrific behind Sepoy in the vein. I think he's going to be right in the mix. Uh, Satin Shoes as well. I loved her Quisette Stakes win. They burnt along early and she was right up there on the speed with them. She was really strong late. A little bit of a query at 1,200, but I think you know she's, she's going too well to totally ride off. And watch out for Crosser Goal for David Hayes. Big win at Geelong, and, and we'll talk about him in a minute in a bit more detail, Sean. All righty. Well, your best bet, you've been on fire in recent weeks. Can you serve us up another one? Yeah, Plucky Bell well, in race one, race I think it just wins. Uh, the only danger I'm, I'm worried about is uh, the right first starter the for Mick Ken, a horse called, I think it's called Goya or Gio, something along those, those <laughs> lines. <second. laughs> Not sure. It's, it's, a, it's a daughter of Magical and Miss, and obviously Magical Miss was a quality horse. Plucky Bell only had two runs and was given a real easy first up kill there at Seymour a couple of weeks back on a wet track. I think a firmer track will be in her favour. 1,400 metre suits. The money's already come for her in the early markets. I think she should be winning. Hannah Barr's legacy is a horse you found for us a couple of weeks ago as your best ruffy, and you think it's got a chance again? Yeah, into another listed race here, over 1,100. And she was 1,200 in the Cockrum last start and was only collared with about 75 to go. She's really on the up, this mare. We haven't seen the best of her, and I think there's more improvement to come out of that Cockrum run. If she leads, you know, she doesn't have to lead. She's very quick from the gates, but she can posse up and maybe take a sit on them second or third. You're getting 11 or $12 about her each way, and for a horse that we know is flying and on the improve, I think she's a terrific bet. And you mentioned uh, David Hayes' three-year-old just before. Is that your roughie? It is the Ruffy Cross of Gold. Yeah, I think uh, 15 to $20 I'm expecting about this horse. They backed it as if unbeatable at Geelong when he had his first start. It was $1.55, I think he jumped. Sat off them, looked to be a mile off them on the turn. He thought, well, hang on, what's this thing going to do? He just absolutely unleashed the fury on him, Sean, in the straight. Terrific late run. And, look, if he brings that... He's obviously a horse with a lot of raw ability. If he brings improvement to this race, it's obviously a stronger test for him. But, look, at the place... You know, if you just wanted to back him for the drum, I think he's going to be right in there. Yeah, well, it's going to be a great day's racing on Saturday, no doubt about that. And you can find all of uh, Mick's uh, selections at theshark.com.au. You'll get that late mail on Saturday when this weather's going to be quite important, isn't it? Yeah, the weather and the track conditions, obviously, as you mentioned, we're here on a Thursday. Things can change and scratchings, of course. So, yeah, keep an eye on the website for all the uh, up-to-date, closer to the race, though. Well, there you go. There's your early mail. We hope you find a winner on Saturday. Good luck.